Don't you know that from coast to coast where there's dope, there's hope, where there's dope, there's hope. Shh, wait, is it lit? Ah, don't. Ooh. Hey. We are back again, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. I hope you're not surprised because we just gonna keep doing it. Guess so, who's back? You know. Earl T is back. It's the boys, man. Guess it's your man back. Earth Tone. And your man, the real peasy, the real one. Yeah, the, not the fake one. Not the, the real fake one. ones, hoes. We not back. the mother niggas. We are back, man. Episode 16. Episode 16. You know what I'm saying? We done made it. We made it. Shit, we, we in the middle of the summer now. It's hot. In the middle of the summer. This is eight months down. The heat is on, goddammit. Yeah. But we here for it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot going on, of course, as always. For sure, for sure. It's been new music summer. It's still beautiful. It's a lot of music coming out from these Q Plus artists, and we loving it. And Mr. Happy then came through with the drop the other oh, day. Oh, man, they came through with the serious drop-off. They drop sure off. did. Yo, they, did, they, did they give you new jars? No. Did you get one of the new jars? I didn't get a jar. Oh, you didn't get one of the new jars. You didn't tell me about the jar. I think you had to order a specific strain. That's oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Why am I not getting put on? You're going to get one. Don't worry about it, though. They're all coming right. through. They got them in stock. Right. They got them in right. stock. Right. Right. But enough of that. We're going to get into this music. Hey, shout out to y'all, man. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining us. For sure. You know what I'm saying? We made it. Well, we making it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? The COVID is still out there. We still safe. Still got to be strapped up in these streets. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. You can't go into the bodega without your mask. You can't do none of that. They're not doing all that. But shout out to New York City for holding it down, man. We keeping the cases down. The hospitals are doing well. People are getting their tests. It still takes like eight weeks to mm-hmm. get your results. But, you know, you can get tested and mm-hmm. they, they working on it. So... It's looking all right, man. It's, it's, it's looking all right for now. So we, we thank you for that. On this side, yep. Yeah, absolutely. But shout out to everybody that's still going through it. Shout out to everybody that, you know, have lost loved ones yeah. due to this pandemic. Due my, to this. Um, my sister uh, and my nephew came mm. down with it. But uh, they're doing good right now. Okay, okay. So, you know, thank God for that. I was Word. definitely praying <clears throat> prayed up for them. But it's serious out here, out in Virginia. Mm. So, you know. It is real, man. And it's still out here and. Like I said, everybody is not doing as well as, you know, we're doing out here right now. Right. So, prayers up. Prayers everybody up. stay safe. And we're going to get into this music, man. Let's get into it, man. This is what we're we here for. Who do we got first? I, I, I can't right. wait to see who we I got first. I can't wait to see. The first one is always a good one. All it's always right. a good one. And I just can't wait to so be king. Bring into the stage <laughs> Juke Marciano. Hey. Woo. She wow. is the first contestant for today's show. And you know what? I'm going to just get into this chick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> She's a Milwaukee, Wisconsin, raised, born and raised rapper. No, 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 no. no. I got that wrong. Uh-oh. She bring is, it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Rewind that. She was born in Bermuda. There you go. She was there you born go. in Bermuda. Don't get it raised. twisted because you know she got that. She made a connection. She did. Off of that. We're going to talk about that later. We're going to talk yeah. about that. All right. So hold on. <laughs> Let me get this shit in real quick. She was born in Bermuda, raised in Wisconsin. That's where she's based at right now. Mm. With a message of realistic salvation. Mm. I'm here for it. Okay. And you know I've been saved. We are doing the Lord's work, but we'll get into that. She's been recorded for over 10 years, seven projects released, including 2018's Holy Daughter and her current project, Holy Per Usual. Per Usual, wow. And I fucks with her. She says, every time I I, I reached out to her on Instagram, on the DM, because you know, artist outreach, you Mm -hmm, feel me? mm -hmm. And she ends her messages with stay holy, hashtag. And that's kind of, you know, I understand the branding behind that, but I also definitely love the intention that comes with that type of energy. And we're mm. going to get into that. She has, oh, before I even get into her, fun fact. Uh-oh. <laughs> I really don't even have to speak too much on Juke Marciano as far as like where she's from and what she all about. What you need to do is you need to watch the query interview with my man sitting here right next to me. I mean, he did kind of just go in with her in I the mean, super super interview I mean, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think. I mean, something like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you wrote, you asked the right questions, you drove the conversation in such a very very 
great and informative way because wow. you really get her vibe just by listening to her speak. Yeah. So this yeah. really, if you really want to know more about Juke Marciano, check that interview out. Yeah, yeah. This is a plug, but at the same time, it's a real. It is. Facts. It's a. It's real facts. I mean, when you when you doing what you're doing when and you the people doing recognize, what you're doing, you know what I'm saying. You want to put the people on, like you doing it for TV. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. That's so. what it is. So I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed the interview, and I pretty much got her whole vibe listening to her. That's what's up. Though. And here we are. So she has this project, Holy Per Usual. Mm-hmm. And um, it came out July 31st, 2020. Fresh out the pot. Fresh out the pot. It is an eight-track EP. And I want to give you the chance to see if you got any... um, If you got anything you want to add about Jude. You know, what what was your Um, takeaway? I mean, she's she's super dope. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the reasons why I wanted to to have her on the show because I came across her on IG and I was just kind of drawn by the music. You know what I'm saying? The look and the music and the sound. And once I really started getting into it, I'm like, yo, she's really ill. Mm -hmm. So... The conversation kind of went there. It was one of those dope kind of conversations. And she, like you said, you hear her talk and she just lets it all out there. You kind of get a clear sense of who she is from just, you know, speaking to her and, you know, how she presents herself. Absolutely. Um, Fun fact. Okay. The last track on this project, Mm. which is actually a spoken word piece, Mm -hmm. the young lady, Ty Giles, I think her name is pronounced, Mm -hmm. um, that's a family friend of hers. So this is like one of the homie homies mm-hmm. that's just nice with the spoken word. And she was like, you know what? Look, here, hold that. You know what I mean? You're going to outro my whole joint. She gave her like a whole, like, it's like a feature, but like, it's like her shit. It's all her. That's dope. So I thought that was an ill joint. That's an ill little cap to put at the end of the album. Listen, and that leads me to my next point. Oh, I'm going to just give it to you right here. Oh, shit. This song... Bring the fire trucks in, oh, boy, shit. son. <laughs> Bring them in. Wow. This album, EP, whatever you want to call it, yeah. fire, seventy-seven percent. Holy shit! <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this project. Wow. Like for real, for real. Call I the love fire trucks. Her. I love what this project gives. Mm. I like that it's a kind of a loose concept. Yeah, she kind of really means what she says when she says realistic salvation. Now, you know, I've gotten into gospel music and, you know, of course, gospel rappers are out there, too. You know what I'm saying? They doing their thing. Cross movement, Lecrae, shout Mm. out. And, you know, they have a way that they deliver their um, rhymes and the way they deliver their message. Yeah. Very, very chaste. Very, very ordained and it kind of can sound a little preachy. Mm. So, you know, she, what she did differently here is she brought it to the streets, but still was like, hey, the church is right she there. She kept the message, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kept the, kept the message. The threat was and always. The, inten- uh, the intention, very, very authentic, but also kept it relatable. And that's what I enjoyed the most about mm. this this project. Okay. Like. I listened to this a couple of times. Wow. I was like, "You brought the fire trucks." I'm, out. I'm, I was smoking to this, and I'm like, "This is, this is what I, this is the best of, maybe borderline qu- uh, Christian gospel rap." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the only thing that probably wouldn't make it that is because she's cursing in it, and that's kind of like a, but that's a radio format thing. But anyway, as far as this album is concerned, fire, well produced artistically and conceptually. I appreciate her for leaning into the religion minus, like I said, the chastity. Like, she took Jesus as king and said, I'm here for the salvation, but fuck all the anointing and holier than thou shit. Mm. That was my thing. The relatability in the rhyming speaks for itself. The album speaks to where she is now. But the only thing that was missing for me is she didn't really give a story about who she is and where she come from personal struggles Mm. so you know while i get her style i get her swag i'm here for all of that but i also want to know just a little bit more about where you come from how did you get into a place Mm. where this became holy per usual for you Mm. you know what i'm saying i say the weakest track and it's not even weak is the rihanna she was really really going shooting her shot at rihanna on the te amo record 
she took that song from her Rated R album and sampled it and made it into a dope ass track. But and and the rhymes is dope on it, the execution is great on it. But I'm just like, wow, she really going in for this girl. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't relate. But but I see it because Rihanna's beautiful, so I would see why that would work. Unbar heads. That that spoken word. Just my favorite. That's it. That I'm by it. your head, that's brother. The, that's I'm the number one for head, you, sister. That's the number it one spoke for to you. Me. I love spoken word, and I love when spoken word is dope. <laughs> mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know what? Enough talking. I hear you. <laughs> you you call the fire trucks out. I feel like you ain't call the fire trucks out in a minute. Really? It's I don't been know a while. why. It might not have. It just feels that way. I feel like I'm old. I feel like I had a streak. Maybe that's what it was. I had like a streak. You had a streak. Where I was calling them like twice a show. Like, it was like four alarm fires going yeah, on. Yeah. So maybe that's what it was. But yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I'm yeah, glad to see that. 75% yeah. loud. Somebody set it off in my hood just now. So here we are. 75% <laughs> fire. Okay. 77. Oh, 77%. 77% fire. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, let me let me not short Let's you. Let me get that right. Let me not short you them 2%. Yeah. Like, that's important. No, no, no. no. I got to give it because, you know, I do the borderline shit. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> this important. Is not let it. me get them 2%. Not it. You got to give that it. That 2%, 77. <laughs> she okay. earned it. She earned it. I gave it a 65% loud. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Whoa. I, Whoa. Were you, were you surprised? Why are you surprised? I'm very surprised. <laughs> Listen, I enjoyed the project, right? Okay. Going into it, it opened up the Holy Gospel joint. I'm like, all right, I remember it because I saw the I saw the video for this. Mm. I really enjoyed the video. The visuals dope. They did it on like a real like a it looked like a historical landmark church type. Like it was mad scenic. It made sense. It went together. All that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On that version, it's only one verse. It's like an intro type joint, yeah. which I thought that's what it was. This version is like four minutes and 30 seconds it's yeah. kind of long and it feel like it feel a little drawn out for me because after a while like the beat kind of is like all right it feels like an intro beat and mm -hmm. it feels like it's going on for too long it's like all right i was i was looking to get into the next joint and then the next couple joints like the next few joints you got the hpu pop-up mm -hmm. And then the Holy Gospel, and then in a minute, they all kind of give you the up tempo yeah, vibe. It's like, yeah. and they kind of bleed into each other a little bit. I really like, like those in that interlude though. But I see what you're saying. I like the interlude too, but I didn't love it. I didn't love because I heard like I'm comparing it to the joint. She has a joint similar like this on uh, Holy Daughter, which mm -hmm. is the joint previous to this, right, which right. I loved. And on this one, I don't think the performance was as executed as well like i love the her bars is always there like she's not like she don't really lower her standards as far as the bars and the right. pain like she's always going to give you spitting yeah that's never going to be the question um i really enjoyed the joint pop-up that's like my favorite out of those like that sound of the beats in that first batch um the ramen on there the guest on there the ramen was ill the feature was hard the feature I thought was the hard Wesley, he bodied it he did he kind of stood out on that joint um and then, like, I didn't really, like, I didn't really feel like it was a standout, standout until we got to the paint milkshake. I fucked with that <laughs> joint. That was probably the first one where I was like, ooh, like, this is like, all right, this is, I really fuck yeah, with this one. The yeah. other joints, it was like, all right, these is cool, these is cool, these is cool. But then when I heard this, I was like, ooh. I was like, she was feeling different on this one. I yeah, like it. Yeah. It was an ill she flip. Was, I was, love the way she flipped the concept. You know what I'm saying? She flipped it on his head. She mm -hmm. brought it from, you know what I'm saying, the the lesbian standpoint. Yeah, yeah. And she like, look, she's speaking for real. Like, you can't you can't handle kids with this. Like, come over here, man. Like, we'll bring what we'll bring it to this yard. We got the milkshake. You know what I'm saying? And it's called Paint Milkshake. Poop. So she kind of flip flip flipped the title, which mm -hmm. I loved. And mm -hmm. then the feature. Kia Rat Princess got off on this. So, like, she picked her features really well. She did. Like, I liked how she did it. I thought the beat was dope. And then I liked the Tiamo joint, which is after this. It gave me, like, Eminem Stan, but, like, from the Stan's standpoint. <laughs> I was like, yo, she kind of borderline on this one. Like, she Rihanna is. might hear this and flag her. Like, like my that's like, what I'm listen, saying. She was giving it up. I really was like, yo, hard she, on that song. yo, she shooting half court threes. Whoa. Like she like, listen, mm -hmm. Riri, look, I've been in your DMs and you ain't hit me back, so right. you ain't leave me no choice. And I'm gonna have to just give you this whole song real quick, this whole thing, and let you know how I feel because it is what it is. Like, 
hey, I, I can't be mad at it, but like she, <laughs> she, t- <laughs> that's a bold joint right she, there. Yeah, but she the dedicated the day, a whole song. It remind me of when J. Cole did not uh, let Nas down. He kind of went mm, in for Nas. Yeah, it kind of give you that the Big Brother. Yeah, Kanye, the Big, big Brother, brother Kanye. Type it give you that the feel, but does. like she giving a different energy. It definitely it. It's a different just energy. Like, it's just like, look, if we ever in the same room, mm-hmm. listen. Can you imagine? <laughs> Yo, a lot of sisters Yo. go for go for Rihanna. We, we be turning these bitches she, out, man. She really do. She really do. She and I wonder if she love it. She drive them crazy. You know she eat it up, but it's like, you got to be careful because you, you hear certain shit. Like, she's talking strong in this. Do not. She talking fuck, strong. Do not fuck your fans, y'all. Don't fuck your fans. I mean, you know they do it. I'm just you saying. Know they do it. But, all right, so you got the Teamo joint, right? Right. And then... Like you said, the unbow, unbow your head is crazy. That's like, what a way to end a fucking project. And like, I don't know. It's just it's just hard. You got to hit. Like the, the, the messaging, the way she delivered it, the way she wrote the shit, it's kind of, it's just super ill. It's, um, it's, it's super ill. Let me see. I got a quotable. Raise your head, sister. What you looking down for? Unbow your head. Just that that's, that's what she repeats throughout the the entire song yeah and obviously the connotation comes from christianity where in prayer you have to bow your head yeah and things like that and then she That's, had a, she had another line where she said any religion that requires me to bend a knee ain't for me or it ain't right or something like that i was like oh that's kind of like it brings me to my knees then it's a bad mm. religion yeah that's hard that was a deep bar right there Quotable. i was like ooh, like so that's the thing like is she teetering on gospel but she like challenging that shit. like look that's this is a new day and age like we this ain't just where... we ain't just accepting everything like we here we holy with it but like she could get unholy real quick i'm all the way here with it you know what i'm saying so listen she bring it home full circle and my favorite joint is probably classic man I fuck classic. with classic. Classic is hard. Classic Every is feature hard. she got on this joint came through and delivered. Like I like with all of the features, and I think they all hometown, all Milwaukee. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she she kind of gave it up like that, which I thought was dope. I mean, that's a hard jazzy ass feel good. The horns. That that beat the is just hard. Sample. Them drums sound crazy. They both went off on it. It gives me total total Midwest. Like I don't know of any mainstream MCs that have come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I can't think mm. of one off the top of my head. I don't think there is. Me either. But, but for sure, sure. Um, I definitely look forward to seeing what she got coming. Yeah, man. She I mean, listen, 65 Loud, that's like a, you know, that's up there. That's like a loud, loud. Yeah. And you got a loud, loud and a fire. Like, listen, y'all got to go check that shit out because you do. Juke is out here, man. Check out her whole catalog. Like, she got she got joints out here. Like, she's she been doing it for here, a minute. She's been doing it for a minute. And don't forget to check out that interview on the query. Of course. Slate absolutely, TV. man. You know what I'm saying? Like we, I said. You know, we, we just trying to spread the wealth. That's all. You know, we just trying to give it up for thing. the people. Give it up for the people. Hey, but man. shout out again for Juke Marciano. Go check that shit out. Holy per usual streaming on all platforms. Yes, man. sir. Yes, all right, sir. man. We got to. We gotta bring another one to the Who we got Who we bringing? Got? Who we got? Hold up. Who we got next? Oh shit. We Out got the one hole. and only Messiah, ladies and gentlemen. The Messiah here? The Messiah. The Messiah. Oh shit. Hold on. Let me get this joint. So, so we just came from Holy Per Usual and now we got the Messiah. Now, see, we ain't even playing that. That's what you gotta understand. Like I, just, I didn't even it just <laughs> we just recognize it just now. Like it's live, just literally, live, literally. Just on, on some other shit. Now we got the Messiah. It's it's some uh it's some, it's some next going, level it's some, shit, going some shit going on. Going on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's some shit going down out here. We don't really know what it is, but listen, we're going to roll with it. So we got Messiah coming to the stage. Q Plus artist, born and raised uh, in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually first met him uh, at the Royalty and Bars showcase. Okay. He performed at one of them. I saw him there, met him through uh, Bugs, and he did his thing. I think he was actually in D.C. at the time. I think when I first met him, I thought he was from D.C. But um, I think he was staying out there. He lived down there for a bit, but he's from the Bronx. He's out here now, based in New York City. Um, he's opened up for artists like Big Frida, K. Michelle, uh, Kerry Hilson. Mm-hmm. Um, he's performed at a few of the big Pride events, um, you know, up and down the East Coast. He's out here with it, doing his thing. He released a few, a couple projects, Outspoken, 
uh, in the center of attention. So you know he got the theme going. I want to. I want to see if he gonna have drop the trilogy. What's gonna be what the trilogy? Think? What's the oh, third man. one? Outspoken, is, center of attention. It's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> Or that nigga. <laughs> that nigga. I'm that nigga. I'm that nigga. I don't know. Something crazy. <laughs> but he got the theme going, which I love trilogies. I love them. You know, I I love the concepts, the conceptual joints. For sure. He's thematic with it. I couldn't find too much information on him. Um, I was looking around and I ain't find a whole bunch. I know you got a fun fact or two. What you, what you dig up? Fun fact. Uh-oh. He giving Dave East tees with them braids. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun fact? Yo, you a clown. <laughs> He I is, see it. I see it. I see it. He is a Sagittarius. Okay. I saw that. December 5th. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was low key, low key stalking because that's what you got to do. I see. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, he you was ha- on. You had him confused with somebody. I did have no him. Names. I did have no him confused. Names. Why? Yeah, you know what? Since you want to go ahead and do this. Nah, I didn't, I didn't do nothing. I just said we ain't going to say no names. I had him confused. We're not going to say yeah, no names. It's all good. We'll keep it cute. Okay, <laughs> so another fun fact though. Uh oh, <laughs> he was on Wendy. Wendy he, Williams. Wendy Williams. He For was, what? He was in the audience. Oh so shit! He had a clip. Is that there a YouTube posted. clip? There is a Instagram clip. If you go deep, 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 as I said, ah, uh, you was really okay. <laughs> you go okay. deep Got in you. the shit. I before, heard you before the break. Heard you. You will find the Wendy Williams clip and saying he would pay a million dollars to buy the suburban that Biggie was shot in. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. How'd that come up? Like, <laughs> I think um, I think on the show, I don't know, Wendy was saying that well, that was one of the hot topics or some shit, that gotcha. it was for sale and oh, somebody gotcha. was buying it. And she, I think she asked the audience, Raise your hand if you Ooh, could buy this truck. Like and that. he raised his hand. Sheesh. And she's like, <laughs> she That's goes, she's like, oh, you, sir? Why well, why, why, would you buy the truck? <laughs> and he's like, because it's Biggie. He's a, he's a legend. And so she's like, she's like, okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want she didn't want to keep that one moving. It was huh? crazy. It was crazy. That's it was crazy. Funny. But That's that was, wild. that was, that was, that was the highlight of my research okay. for, um, Mosiah. Okay. Well, you know listen, you found, you found more tidbits than I did. So kudos <laughs> to you. That's that's crazy. Um, yeah. Well, he got this new joint called New Chain. Okay. New Chain. Um, featuring Naya. I think it's Naya Money, right? Nia Monet. Is Nia Monet? Nia Monet. Because she say money on the song. So Moni, because that's like her nickname. Oh, Moni. Yeah, gotcha. Nia Mo- Moni. You know, that's Nia like- Monet. Shout out to Nia Monet. Um, mm. This joint came out July 15th. Right, right. So, you know. Not too long ago. It's kind of fresh out the pot. New fresh. joint, new release. Three minutes, 24 seconds. I gave this joint aloud, man. 62%. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. I, I really, I really enjoy it. I, <laughs> I really enjoyed this song. You enjoyed this? This? Okay. Okay. Why? <laughs> You sound very, very shocked. <laughs> it's and always surprised. It's always a shock. You never I, know. You know what I'm saying? Just I never mean, know. I listen. We all, I enjoyed it. So it came on, right? Okay. And it's a mellow ass beat. It's one of them like trippy red esque, like little skis, like one of them type beats. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, you think you're gonna get them vibing out, one of them vibe out little Uzi type joints. Like I like the beat. It came in as vibey. And then he just come on with the the aggressive wop, like, oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just got a new chain. I was like, okay, mm-hmm, hold up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the hook come on. <laughs> Yo, I like the hook. New chain. I love the fucking hook. Like, it's one of those, it's like a guilty pleasure type hook because it's like, the concept is like typical. It's like, all right, a new chain. All right, my nigga. Like, you get a new chain. Like, how many times can you write a song about a new chain? Talk about new jewelry, bling bling, all You've that. You've been we getting get it, new right? chains for a minute. Yeah, like we get it, right? But like, it's how you do it. And I love the fucking. I like the contrast of the smooth, mellow out beat, and then he come on with like the kind of aggressive, choppy flow. Like, I just bought a new chain in this heavy nigga and my jeweler called me up and told me that is ready, nigga. That, that shit just kind of bop. Like, I like that shit. It was rocking. Like, the, the verses, he kind of, he ain't go crazy lyrically on the verses. Mm-hmm. Um, the flow was there, but he didn't really give me no bars, which I thought he was going to kind of give me a few bars. Mm-hmm. Like, he hit you with the last line where he said, um, they treat me like a, 
like a treasure. What would he say? Um, treasure chest. <laughs> what he say? And he went hard he had on that treasure last chest ball. On the last ball. He went and I was hard. like, okay, that was kind of cool, but like he ain't really give me no crazy crazy bars but i did like the flow on it i like the beat and like i said i love that hook it's just a fun hook i like saying the shit and then i thought nina monet came in and kind of stole the show mm -hmm. like i thought she kind of really bodied mm -hmm. she got off she mm -hmm. did a thing she, she had a ate. few she had a few lines in there when i was like ooh, she ate um and she really kind of like finished it like he kind of like lobbed it up a bit and she came in with the yam and i liked it man i really enjoyed this little bot it's like a little bot and like I said, the content ain't nothing out of this world, but yeah. it's like it's one of those things where it's like you already know what it is, what it's given as far as the content. New chain, you hit a title, it's like all right, you already know what it is. Yeah. But it's like what you gonna do with that? How you gonna give it to me? But I thought Messiah could have definitely gave me some more. Like he could have flipped the new chain shit. He mm -hmm. just literally talked about getting a new chain and you know niggas getting jealous nothing more nothing less it wasn't less. really just you could have played with that a mm -hmm. lot more and it would have took this to like another level for insightful, me insightful something i thought it was allowed man because i really enjoyed it i like i played it back when it come on i kind of like okay like this a little this a little bot for me okay. i'll be liking these joints but i'll be liking them joints from like Uzi and them joints like that like mm. i'll be liking these little one-off joints so i don't want to hear a whole album full of it but when you give me a one-off like that I fuss with it, so that was my opinion. Okay. Loud sixty two percent. What you Loud what you think of it? Sixty two percent. What you think about it? Can we get Reginald Miller oh, in the office shit. for a second? Call him. That nigga said Reginald. Bring him here. Bring him here. That's why you were so surprised. <laughs> wow. Bring him here for a second. Hold on, hold on. Let me get a little sip. Yeah, real go ahead, quick. go ahead, go ahead and get it. Let me get mm -hmm. a sip too, because she. Yeah. So the things that you said about it. Ah. That he could have improved on uh -huh. were really, really a big deal to me. Oh, so that's what it was. Okay, gotcha. I thought he could have went harder. Yeah, yeah. Considering I'm going through his Instagram again, he got joints. He got like endless he raps. freestyles. This nigga endless, raps, and he goes. He in. raps. He goes. I'm trying to understand why didn't you go yeah. in on this record? I agree. Why I agree. couldn't you do that? I agree. I agree. What was preventing you? That would have took this shit to the next level for me. I agree. No punchlines. You just kind of rolled the beat, and then your girl kind of really did eat you. She did. She, she did. did. She so, did. So you know. But it is a, it But is that's a, what I'm saying. If you just judging a song, I don't know. This, this the song know. is all I got yeah. in front of me, really. <laughs> <Yo, laughs> Reginald, wait, what percentage? What percentage though? Percentage 21. 21 percent Reginald. Reginald. Damn. You know, okay. It's mad regular. Like it's a regular joint. Yeah, like, nah, a lot I of a lot of people are doing songs like these where it's like kind of bouncy, but the the material is just it's just kind of vacuous. It's mm, empty. It yeah. doesn't bring you anywhere. Like I would have I, I'm here for a new chain. Bitch like dripping all day. I want the fucking new chain anytime. But I also feel like give me a sense of purpose. Like what's the what's the whole you know, what how does it make you feel? Like what about the new chain is Ain't bringing nobody you? run up on me. Ain't nobody press me, nigga. <laughs> all right, so you just mad you ain't get robbed that day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like Wendy Yo, Williams said, that is funny. I'm just saying. I hear you. Hey, listen, listen. Y'all gotta saying. go judge. Listen, a drastic rating like that, y'all gotta go judge for yourself. You, you got really a Reginald do. James, 21 percent. You got a 62 percent loud. So there you have it, man. Messiah, you know hey, saying? I like the joint, man. It's a, it's a catchy little ditty. I mean, I, I want to see what you got I coming like next. The hook. But yeah, man, I know he can next. spit too. That's another thing. You're right. right. I know he can spit. I've like, heard he him. Ain't, he ain't. He not playing. He ain't go crazy on this. He didn't. He Nia went crazy. She did. Nia went crazy, but he ain't go crazy. But listen, loud, Reginald, there you have it, man. Who we got next? Man? Who we got next we got to the next, stage? Man? Who we bringing up? Let All right. Bring up. Oh, shit. We got Davy Boy. <sighs> Davy Boy. Okay. He is a Baton Rouge, Louisiana raised, hey. LA based recording artist. Okay. Louisiana. Originally born in Bay Area. Oakland. Okay. Oh, really? You know, I didn't this know is, that. this has been a the theme of the show. We've had someone that's coming from out the Bay Area pretty much for the last couple of episodes rapping. But you know, he is he is he's 
LA based right now. Okay. He is albino. And you mm-hmm. pointed that out. You saw it. And I was like, maybe he is, you know. Nah, uh he he, he is. and he's he's open about it. Yeah. Um and that's that's not a point of judgment. It's just that's just a fact. Yeah. So um he did go through a thing where he had to like get comfortable and be in his own skin and be happy with that. And that's music that he is making as kind of reflection of that. Mm. He suffers from general anxiety disorder and he turned it into a platform to connect other people dealing with similar issues. Uh, he's done this by, you know, the rollout of his current single, which we're going to discuss, Do Myself Better, by doing an editorial on DJ Booth, highlighting the days mm. before the release of the single where he sh- shared the mental struggles and the worries surrounding the rollout. So wow. real artist shit that I was like, bitch, mm. bitch. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of singing my song, talking about, you know, shit that we go through as artists before we put out a single. Yeah. So he shared it in real time. Each day he had a little entry and it's on uh, DJ Booth right now. Mm. He That's also, hard. He also has a podcast where he did... Um, the same thing kind of surrounding the release as well. It's available on Spotify. The, the latest episode was released on uh, Friday, August 14th. Mm. So that's available. And um, in one of the entries, he recounts his first time singing solo for church at seven, where he felt the butterflies got up to sing and froze. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And his debut single, Came out in 2019. It was Dirty Mind featuring Day Burger, an artist we re- released or we discussed. I was thinking it was last episode. Yeah, you know. So shout out to that. That's a that's a dope connection to make for your first single that you he's came out, out here, with. Man. He's got some he, some, some he, heavy he's press out here. He's doing it and doing it on all his all on his own unsigned indie. So he has the single "Do Myself Better" came out July 23rd, 2020. The song is loud for me. Wow. Loud, loud, loud. loud. Oh my God. 70%. Yeah, 70%. 70. Loud 70%. Oh shit. Okay. I like this song. Okay. I like the left field lit as fuck indie alternative type production giving me Peter Bjorn and John. You ever heard mm. of them? His voice I never gave heard me that. that. That sounds familiar though. Toro y Moi, you ever heard of him? Mm. Another like kind of indie dude that's kind of out there. Okay. He, you know, been out there for a couple months. Kind of blood orange type crowd. Okay. Don't alternative indie kids. Okay. That's okay. what he's giving me. The okay. production is just left field. Not, I'm just here for it. Okay. Okay. Got the little breaks with the 80s, mm. you know, synth in there. Mm. I'll just think he could have tightened his harmony a little bit when he sang the verses, but the hook is dope. Mm. The hook is dope. So, okay. You know, okay. That's okay. My, that's my thing. Look at you with the louds. That's okay. My loud. Okay. That's my loud for today. Well, listen, <laughs> I. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> no. Oh, no, listen. Boy. Oh, no. We're going to have to call Reginald back on. Oh, shit. Sir, Sir Reginald, man. Damn. I, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. Damn. I wasn't vibing with it. Yeah. Damn. I, I feel. I wasn't vibing with it, man. Oh, no. I, when it came on, it came on interesting. I was like, okay, this kind of gave me like the video game. Like, you just reached the, the the last level. You about to fight the boss and shit. Yeah. And then it went into like a whole nother shit. Like, you said it had its chapters. It came on. It was smooth and shit. I'm like, okay. Okay, he said, boom, then it went in. Then I'm like, he came in with the like super falsetto harmony that was kind of beating against each other. It was oh, like, ah, man. I'm not really. That kind of, yeah, I'm not going to lie, it kind of threw me off. I was like, ah. Mm. And then the hook came in and that beat change up. I fuck with it. It's totally like. Some shit I would have tried to do uh, a few years ago. It just didn't feel like it fit that song for me. Like, I felt like I might have loved it after something else. It just felt like after that verse, it was just like, ah. Then after that, I just never recovered. And it was just like, no. Oh, no. Yeah, it was like, it ain't it for me. It ain't it for me. And what what the saving grace (laughs) for me was the content and what he was talking about and, like, what he was getting at, like, but the execution for me just wasn't. It really, wasn't there for you. Nah, damn, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it, man. Ugh. Yeah, Ugh. I know, I know. Sheesh. Harsh, Ugh. harsh. 
I know, but listen, that's just how I felt. Y'all gotta go check it out. You got a loud from Peasy. You got a twenty five percent Reggie. This is totally opposite of what the last happened. So like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you gotta go. Music is like that, man. It's wild. Like, it's crazy. But listen, we all got our reasons. We all look at music in different ways, and we all appreciate different shit. And you get stripes for certain things. You might get, you know, checks and X's for for somebody else. So. That's how I go, man. Go check it out. Davey Boy, hey, keep doing your thing. Keep I definitely want to hear more. Of, he's definitely on my radar now, man. I want to hear more from him. Um, I'm not that familiar with his music. Like This is like the first I'm hearing of him, so I'm yeah, definitely looking same forward. Here. I'm not that familiar with his music. And it's, like you said, it's super eclectic. It's very interesting, but that can kind of... The Kavir left yeah, towards Kavir me left. or Kavir it right can, yeah, towards it kinda, your it man E. It did for me. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is, but listen, man, we so out here. Davy Boy, go check it out. Do myself better on all streaming platforms yeah, right now, man. All whole platforms. All right, man, what we doing? We bringing in the ally? Oh, my God, we are we for, bringing in that ally of the, of the day. day? Who we got for the ally? Ally of the day. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Hey. Who we got? hey. hey. Woo! So listen, we got a twofer. This is a controversial. We got a twofer we, for the we've ally. Had, we've had a couple day. controversial allies. We sure did. And I enjoy this because you know what? I think we need to kind of put some more pressure mm-hmm. on this whole ally topic for sure. and this whole because a lot of people, you know, they use that banner when it's necessary, when it's convenient, you know, when it's beneficial, but they don't really be stepping up and they don't doing really what they be about do. that so, life. We got the one and only Cardi B. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Cardi. hold on, hold on, hold on. This is mine. Oh shit, is it? Boy, I'm sorry. Boy, I'm sorry. Never mind. No, it is you. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. Like, damn, you stepping on my toes. You. <laughs> my bad. He my just bad. shot my whole I intro. Did, I did. I did. I'm like, I know I got the answer for a reason. You I got mad bullet points. Yeah, true, true. This is me. Anyway, me. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got the one and only Cardi B. Cardi B, Barty, coming to the stage, man. All right. all right, this is this is an interesting one. We all, I mean, we all know who she is. Female hip hop artist, former reality TV star, loving hip hop from 2015 to 2017. She signed with Atlantic Records in 2017, dropped her debut album, Invasion of Privacy, and went number one on Billboard 200. Mm-hmm. Bodak Yellow went crazy. That's mm-hmm. when I first saw her, because I never even saw her on Loving Hip Hop. I saw Bodak Yellow clips on IG of people in the club going crazy to this song I had never even heard, but the whole crowd of like a thousand people knew it verbatim. I'm like, yo, what is going on? Ran down on that bitch twice. Crazy. I was on her since then. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So people. she popped around, came through, had some controversial statements that's been recently dug up about um, trans women. Mm-hmm. She was seen in the Twitter. She was saying something about, you know, getting back at her man and setting him up, getting a threesome and be like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a threesome with a chick and boom, 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 boom. Then after he, you know, do what he got to do, she come out like, oh, yeah, it was a tranny. It was a tranny. I was like, woo, damn. Like, that's kind of, mm-hmm. first of all, that's mad vindictive and wild. And that's mm-hmm. like, that's how you getting back at a nigga. So damn. what you saying about. Ooh, it was a little, it was a little cringeworthy. But this was a few years ago. It was a few years ago. Cardi is a relatively young chick. She's like in her late Mm twenties, so this was like her early twenties around when that happened. Right. Um, it's no not making excuses for shit, but she did apologize for it, and um, she recently came out as bi. I heard as well. So this is another. Did she? Yeah, this is another thing. So apparently she had like experiences. She's saying she don't stand by the. You know, the LGBTQ community, not mm-hmm. only because they're her fans, but because she empathizes on what they go through, you know, being confused with having feelings for the same sex. Right. And she has cousins that are trans and has issues with family members that they can't come out to and all of that. So she, like, was making her case and all that. Right. And it was like, all right, it's cool. We got to give people the opportunity to make mistakes, bump their head against the wall and realize and, you know, make amends for it and apologize. Um. So... As of now, as she stands, we hold her as an ally. She also got another joint that we reviewing today with another ally. With another ally. Meg Thee Stallion, who's been giving it up. Um, giving and then Cardi up. also recently stood up for Zaya, who yeah. is Dwayne Wade's uh, daughter, who recently came out as trans. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, she, she stood up when people was, you know, giving her a lot of backlash for doing her thing and being herself and just 
you know, chopping it up, tearing it up on Instagram, sure. showing her pops, and people had, you know, a lot of negative shit to say about that. So Cardi B stood up and spoke out against that, mm-hmm. which I thought was commendable. Um, but she also had another mishap with her and her boo, Offset, who we know she's married to. Yeah. And he recently had some homophobic Issues. lyrics. He did. You know, that he could did. be seen as homophobic, definitely. He says something about, you know, he don't vibe with queers. Yeah. I cannot vibe with queers. Da 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 theirs. Something like, you know, the Migos yeah. flow. Yeah. But yeah. like, yeah. His, his rebuttal was he didn't mean it. He apologized for it. He didn't realize that's, that's what the word queer meant. Man. It's like, really? Yeah. Uh, in 2019, uh, 18, 20. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, all right. But, yeah. all right, you know what I'm saying? But he apologized because, you know, some people, you won't even get that. They'd be like, all right, fuck it, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. But we got to, we kind of got to do better. Like, it's, it's, somebody got to be the, the, the judge and jury on this whole, <laughs> what makes an ally shit. Because it's a lot of things that go into it. And people, you got to think, we coming from a time where this, LGBTQ shit was not the new trend. It was not on and popping. It no. was not, oh, my new favorite thing. It was not shit is sweet. It was not you seeing us on TV here mm-hmm. and there. It was not none of that. It was different. And we still coming out of that. And a lot right. of people are unlearning a lot of that shit. Yeah. So we had a point where it's a great way to put we that. got the side eye and we scrutinizing them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm, that look funny, but we, we still got to give them that benefit of the doubt because there's a lot of niggas coming up out of that that yeah. still got a, lo- a long way to go. A long way to go. And they trying. Go. You know what I'm saying? We got to give kudos to the people who at least trying because yeah. there's motherfuckers who just like, nah, fuck You it. had the brat who just released, just recently came out and said she has a a girlfriend. I think that's her girlfriend. Or they engaged. They engaged. It was an engagement gift where they, um, I think her girl gave her a Bentley. Mm. Um, but yeah, that yeah. was that and was recent. The and brat the brat has what? had the a 90s. career since the mid nineties. So yeah. everybody is going through a bit of a transition. Yeah, so, so you gotta give just, people the room to kinda, you know, you know get over the learn and grow. Curve. And listen, everybody really don't know. Like yeah, everybody So it is know. a chance he might be like, all right, because if you look it up, I think if you you could kind of not skew the definition, but it don't necessarily say that means gay. But it's just like, what else does that mean? Yeah. Like, you know, why else would you be saying that? Right. Like, that's what you're referring to. But yeah. it is what it is. But um, we got Cardi B out here, and she's an ally. She's the ally she of the, the day. Ally of you know the what day I'm saying? With another um, ally, two fur with Meg the Stallion. Yeah, they out here, and they f- listen, man. <sighs> These bitches know what they doing out here. They fucking broke the internet. Two super mega stars, the hottest chicks in the game, probably arguably right now. Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B, August 7th, 2020, three minutes, seven seconds. Wop. Wop. Wet ass pussy. Wet ass pussy. Ah. Hey, I like this joint, man. I gave it a loud 62%. You gave it a loud? Yeah. I gave it a loud 62%. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Listen. Okay, go ahead. This song... <sighs> It's kind of like cheat code square. Like, you can't really go wrong with Meg and Cardi unless you just don't know what the fuck you're doing, first of all. They team knew what they was doing. They gave you exactly what you wanted from this duo. You hear Meg and Cardi on paper, and you like, you don't want them to get deep and conscious. Like, you're not looking for one of those from this, this duo. Like, if you say that, you lying. You know what I'm saying? So they gave you what you wanted. They gave you the salacious shit. They're going to give you the sexy-ass videos. You know they wearing some crazy titties is out, ass is out. You know what I'm saying? Nails dead, hair dead, everything dead. You know how they coming already. But they sampled the hoes in this house, the house joint, which is my Hoes shit. in this house. That's my Hoes shit. Hoes but I like house. the way they sampled it because they kept it simple. They just gave you some drums, some hard drums, some bass, and that boom, that hoes boom. in the hell, there's some hoes. And these bitches was rapping. They just rapping. Like they went off. I like how they kind of tossing it back and forth to each other. They playing off of flows. They ain't do the same exact flow. You know what this is? Oh, well, go ahead. I'm gonna nah, go you. ahead, go ahead. Intervene. Listen, you know what this remind me of? A little bit like the Rottweiler. Ooh, that's a great comparison. It's a female version of the Rockwaller, Method Man, Red Man. And that shit was just too short. It, it was, was like a man short, it was like, but it was just them two going, going hard off. for 
whatever amount of bars. I they was love. Going in. I like the way they did this. Shit. I like, like the, they gave me what I thought I was gonna get from this combo. It could have been better, but I feel like they gave you exactly what you bargained for. Like exactly what you expected what you would from expect. Them. And it's like it's formulaic as hell, but it's executed to perfection. So you got to give it up. Like it's a formula for a reason, and it works. And then the video is like. The video not even that crazy. It's just like the colors and then the outfits they wearing. Listen. And then, you know what I'm saying, you see Kylie come through and a couple of other cameos. But it's like, it ain't, it wasn't that crazy. But it was enough to make motherfuckers go crazy and talk about it and lose their shit and get their feathers ruffled. Like, niggas was out here really with their panties in a bunch. What was your What was your rating? Mine was loud 62%. <laughs> What's your rating? Loud 62%. Get the fuck out of here, man. Come on, man. I'm done. I'm done, man. Cut the camera off. Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> That's. Are you serious? I'm serious. That's crazy. I'm serious. Listen. That's wild. Everything that you're saying about this song is exactly right. That's crazy. 62%. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about this record. I'm like, no, this record is not original by no, any stretch of the imagination no. but that's why i'm like what's the but controversy it's the, the perfect okay hold on here's, yeah can we leave it go ahead because i want to get into that here's the controversy hold on I'm, hold on I'm, I'm gonna give you a couple quotables okay from the record okay okay when he f word and at, he asked who is it when i ride the d word i'm gonna spell my i'm gonna spell my name now did you say d word i did say d word <laughs> I'm referencing that bullshit that happened. You, you, know you. You, know you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Wait, no. You know what I'm talking about? The no. whole Ben Shapiro controversy where he read the lyrics live on air. I think it was on CNN. Wait, what lyrics? The lyrics to Cardi B's record. I did not hear this. Oh, my God. Wait, you I did missed not out hear on this whole this. way. Oh, wait, wait. wait. No, we... See, the, that's what like... <laughs> and he was using it as a platform. And he it said was, that? It wasn't was CNN. Word? He said he didn't say the exact. He didn't say my phrase, but he would say p word in exchange for pussy, b word in exchange for bitch. You know what I'm saying? He would do it like that. He read it on I think it was Fox News, Ugh. and it was like, and he was doing it to kind of criticize I hate the song people sometimes. Ugh. And I'm just like, first of all, you sound like a d word. Yeah. Second of all, you sound like a p word yeah. too. Doing all of Shut that. The fuck up. And third of all, why is it always a problem when sisters? When women, sisters, oh my women God. of color want to express sexuality. How many times are we going to go through this in life? We've seen it with Kim. We've seen it with Foxy. And then we saw but it again with Nicki. that's why I didn't Nikki. even give it that much energy. And first of all, if you look at Cardi's feature track record, every feature she's done has looked similar to this exact same video. Like she did it the City Girls. She did it with Nicki. Like... It's the same shit. It's just a different song with it's a different just, twist on it. It's literally same it's shit, colorful, different toilet. Colorful with titties and ass out, nails and hair that everything did with a bouncy ass salacious song. They got it. They got you exactly because they like, gave why? you exactly what you wanted. But you know what's the gag? But it's like men was really even like that's the gag. Like we, what was that about? You know how you you know how you got a thing called a white male gaze, and so. They gave you exactly what the white male gaze wants from black women. Mm. They gave you all of that. And it was but too when much they do it, it, when they do much. it and they own it, they don't like no, that. No, no. Because then you're not you're not you're not submissive you're not, enough. You're not submissive enough. Yeah. You're not doing the because they said it don't work no more. It doesn't work no more. Now nah, I'm off it. That's the fucking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Listen, that's the that's the whole thing about this record. That so yeah, the fuck it was out. a sixty two percent. That's wow. Okay, look at that. We was fucking off than a motherfucker. Off than a motherfucker. What was the first one? The first one. The first one was Juke. And it was just a we little was, bit we off. Was a little bit off. Just we a was little bit off. Decent. But and then this was spot on. That's crazy, fam. I want to read another quotable. Go ahead, go ahead. Cause I got some quotables. Too. <laughs> Cause I got quotables. <laughs> I want to read another. <laughs> it's my favorite. Oh wait, I think you said my um my uh Megan quotable. When he fucked me and he asked was it? Yeah, you just say that. Name. Name. <laughs> yeah, come on. I just totally imagine her doing that. I could totally imagine her doing that. But my other quarter was. Oh, no, I had a different quarter. Go ahead. I want you to touch that little dangly thing. Oh, that's that was mine. That was mine. <laughs> 
That was my Cardi quote. That was I have it literally that written down right here. Like she bodied that. She really. But that's did. like, come on, you can't see that though, and you know exactly what she's talking about, and it's in Cardi B's character. It's just like I like how the whoever video wrote that shit bodied that shit. I like how the video it look, give me Beetlejuice. It's like a little bit of wetting. It's like little Kim and Nicki Minaj and 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 Missy Elliott both had an orgy, and they gave birth to that video. Yeah. That's, because that's it reminds me of One Minute Man shit. from Missy. It yeah. reminds me of Crush on You from Little Kim. And it reminds me of Anaconda from Nicki. Oh, my God. That's crazy. They it, probably took elements from all that shit. You know how that is. Like, you know how it is. You know what it is. She said, if you eat my ass, then he a bottom feeder. Big D stand for big demeanor. <laughs> I can make you come before I even meet you. Damn. Like, that's some. That's a bold ass claim. But I mean, hey, listen, listen, women. We the niggas crazy out we, here. Man. We all here for the sisters to do their thing. I love it and and embrace their sexuality. And I love it even more when they purposely do it and bait yeah. media. Yeah, because they went crazy. That shit is on like what two, three million views or something crazy. Like no, that, that shit is close to a hundred million. A hundred million views on listen, YouTube already. Look like at that. it was Nuts. like when I last checked, it was eighty million. When I when the video came out the million? night that I saw it, I think I saw it on Sunday night. It was at sixty five. Aye, aye, aye. Look at that. So listen, hey, she, shout out to Cardi B and May. They did that. Shout out to the, the, to the, to the of allies. The day. Go check it out. WAP. If you Wop. haven't already, I'm sure you heard it. And then the remixes is going crazy. Everybody going out here. With oh, the oh, please put uh, the remixes the, away, the y'all. Remixes oh, my nuts. God. The male remixes. Oh, God. The BADs. Oh, uh, no. Here we go. All right. Uh. All right. All right. All right. We heard you. We heard you. <laughs> but um, go check out that Cardi B, Meg Stallion, WAP on all streaming platforms, man. I love the, the day, man. Allied on the Herbal Tea Podcast. Look at that. You know what we're going to get into now, man. You know we got to take it get over. Into. We got to get into these streets. So you know the streets is still on fire, right? Still on fire. And they continue to be on fire. Continue. Because you know how we just finished wrapping up on Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion mm-hmm. with the WAP mm-hmm. and all of that. Yep. And so that song came out August 7, 2020. Three days later, we find out that Joe Biden... President Chu uh, candidate Joe Biden, his running mate, he chooses his running mate on mm-hmm. that Monday, mm-hmm. the 10th, Kamala Harris. Oh. Former presidential running person that ran. Yes. 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 Got Adam. <laughs> and the way, the wave. That came oh because you see, you got the sexism playing on all different parts now. Because, you know, they being sexy, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion, you got that type of sexiness. And then you also have another aspect where it's a black woman mm-hmm. now being named as a running mate for one of the highest offices in the country. Damn, that's crazy when you look at it. For the first, this is the first time this has ever happened. History, historic. Historic history is have, being made have, here. Have you want to look at it? And so everybody, a shitstorm is indeed brewing, like we were just talking about before you, before the show started. So you know, Kamala Harris has been named, and this is what I'm talking about. That sexism part is the first thing that come out, and then you get 45 bringing back the tired old birther conspiracy mm. shit. Kamala was like, listen, I was born in Oakland. Hey, <laughs> don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Her father is Jamaican. Her mother is Indian mm. from India. Mm. And so she's biracial. So on that sense, this is historic even more so because not only is she a black woman, the first black woman to be nominated as the running mate for the pres- uh, vice presidential seat, she is the first Asian woman being nominated for the same position so it's even more it's even more poetic how this thing going on right now and I first just, jamaican first jamaican of course and, and so her, trifecta hey haiti is turning up you know what i'm saying everybody in the afro-caribbean community is now paying even more attention because you know uh against all you know it's not a it's not a major major voting block, but 
but it's a growing voting block. Mm. You know, Caribbean black uh, black Caribbean Americans. Mm. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is now we got all these. We got people who you know have residences or uh, you know they have they family, family connections or they're from you know the West Indies Caribbean nations my pops paying attention as well my whole family pretty much yeah so you know it th- I think it's I think it's very very beautiful how this thing and so it just didn't escape me seeing how all of this was going on pretty much at once I'm gonna use some fast facts Uh-oh. about Miss Kamala Harris oh she you know just like we said first female and first black um, district attorney of San Francisco. Hmm. First. Big deal. First is a lot. Big first, deal. First is going on a lot for her. It's a big deal. She was also the first um, Asian... Oh, then she became, after she was the district attorney, she became the uh, attorney general for the state of California. First black woman, first Asian woman there in that aspect. She's the first Asian woman in the Senate and the second black woman in the Senate, she's the Senate. Uh, she's currently the senator for for the state of California. Mm-hmm. So you know, as we said, Jamaican father, Indian mother, went to Howard University. Hey, then law school at the University of California. Mm. And you know, there's a whole you know controversy about you know her limited stance on policing as far as when she was going back going back to her days as being a district attorney. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that they kind of lob at her is the fact when Trayvon Martin passed away, she didn't speak too much on police reform. Mm. When Mike Brown, you know, uh, got killed by police, she didn't speak too much on, uh, police reform. And these were days where she was, uh, district attorney general of California. Mm -hmm. These were those days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she didn't have a whole lot to say about that. But later on, like, she came to the game a little bit late. So people are kind of looking at her square eyed, talking about, like, what is she doing out here? Rightfully so. You know what I'm saying? But that's just, that's one, you know, that's one of the things that she got. But I think. I mean, and that's to be expected for anybody who's stepping up into that position. You you get the magnifying glass on you. Yeah. They looking Absolutely. for shit. Like it's a hunt to find the most dirt and like be the first to reveal it and had a big yeah. story and a big scoop on the. Especially when you uh, you're gonna be running for a major political office. Absolutely. You're gonna get and all you're the a first. Time. You're so many firsts. You're so many firsts. So like you're the gonna target see, is on your back. I'm waiting for. I'm here for the first vice presidential debate. There's only gonna be one. Mm. Her against that's Mike be, Pence. That's gonna be. I'm watching. I'm here for she that. She don't fuck around when it she's comes to not, the like, because she's not. Because she's snappy. Ate, she ate Biden. She did. That's on, why I was like. Uh, one of the. But debates. that's why I give him kudos because for him to bite the pill on that one mm-hmm. and be like, I, you know what? She kind of. She chewed my ass out, but you know, I'm gonna need that. Yeah. I fuss with you. Come through. Go, right. Come fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? You so, know what I'm saying? We gotta. That's, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Like, it's. it's it's going to be a very, very... Now, I also want to put out there, this year, they're fucking around with these, uh, with the election, with the Postal Service, mm-hmm. slowing down, def- kind of, t- you know, not putting as much funds or resources behind them. And here's the irony about that. People have been saying the United States Postal Service is going to go out of business and all of that shit. This has been like that. the last decade. This that, that kind of thing has been going on. But at the same time, it's still here. And mm-hmm. it's still a way for, you know, people to communicate. So being that this year is going to be more talk about absentee ballots because of the whole pandemic situation. People don't want to risk their health, mm. standing in line for hours to do a vote on Election Day. So the easy way to do it is to submit for an absentee ballot. Now, here's the thing. All states are different. All of them. So represent dot us. You go to the website, you choose the state that you're in, and you will be able to see what the minimum requirements are for you to be able to get your absentee mm, ballot. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Get the New, info. New the plug. York, you get the plug. Exactly. New York was doing absentee ballots for the primary election that happened in June, mm-hmm. and they had a stay on the law that allowed, that uh, requires you to have an excuse, like a medical excuse. So there's a temporary ban on that that's going to go through into the general election in November. Okay. So uh, you can submit 
for you can go you just go to the website when you go to the represent.us website they have links there for you to uh get your website from the secretary of the state so um in the website that you got to go to to get your absentee ballot yeah so i'm doing this because they're gonna fuck around and just try to fuck this whole election up i say vote early get your ballot and send it in early because if the whole deal is about you know the the board of elections and everybody counting votes and all of that and how that's going to be done i would just say you know get in your shit now Mm -hmm. and you know take care of business now so you're not you're not worried about if your vote is going to yeah, yeah. count. You're not flooding in at the last minute trying to and exactly. your shit get lost in the sauce. And it's like, all right. It was a mess during the New York primaries, and it took like weeks for them to get the results. So we're still out here waiting for certain candidates. It's why we haven't really figured out an efficient, like a more efficient way to do that. Why yeah. can't we do this electronically? It's my that's whole what I'm thing. I'm saying, like... <laughs> I get it's going to be a risk of being hacked or whatever, but what yeah, is it? Like, man. motherfuckers, your bank accounts get hacked. People Pretty get your social much. security numbers. Well, you think they ain't going to get your votes and all that shit? Exactly. It is what it is, but You're just gonna have to make have the, the shit. Cyber it's going to be more efficient. You can make a computer that's smart enough to do the shit. Like, just... For sure. At least look into it and try the shit. Like, come on. Man. Get with the times. Represent.us. Go visit the website. If you're thinking about getting your absentee ballot, I highly recommend you just do it early. Yeah. You don't want to be, you know, caught up in this mess. You want to, if you want to ensure that your vote is going in and it's being counted, like I said, represent by us. Mm. Um, switching gears for a minute. Uh oh. There are some LGBT media platforms out there, just like Slay TV. Look at that. So I just kind of want to give you a little bit of a primer on a couple of other ones that I found out there that have LGBT oriented content Mm. all types of q plus content all the tv so it's like netflix specifically for the q plus community okay you know what i'm saying so first one this is a white owned company here tv uh or here.tv you just Mm. go to the website they're mainstream they're a mainstream premium television plat uh network launched in 2002 Okay, they've Before, been out here for a They've minute. been out here for a minute. So here. they definitely have a little bit of longevity there. They okay. have multiple video partners such as Spectrum, Verizon, Amazon, Hulu, Apple, Optimum, and more. So you basically can watch them on cable TV because mm. that is one of their formats, formats as well as watching their content online. Multiple formats. On demand. Multiple, multiple. <laughs> and I thought... I thought that was pretty dope. I was looking up one. I didn't write down. Mm. Uh, I think it was called Atlantic. Atlantic Group. Um, they are a their cable network that services you know all the states up. And I was trying to see if I could get it through them, um, and I couldn't get it because I can't get that particular um, cable company. My neighborhood, you know, is set up to only get cable from spectrum why so, is it always so extra to get certain yeah, stations and yeah shows? you gotta like look to see if they service your area out yeah. there but that's when i saw that and it's hair tv like h-e-r-e h-e-r-e dot tv mm. and you know you can't but you can't get them on spectrum so if you call spectrum and you want that channel you probably have to buy a bundle to get it it is a premium channel so that's just okay. kind of how it works. But they are out there and they are available. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Home to the DL Chronicles. I don't know if you've oh, heard of DL okay, Chronicles. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, was okay. Their, okay. That's their shit. That was the shit. You know what I'm saying? That was the <laughs> shit. Yo, if um, they bring that back? They aren't. It's on. Oh, it's coming back? It's, no, it's on. Well, I don't know if it's coming back, but it's definitely available nah, on I MTV. I mean, like, restart that bitch, <laughs> B. Like, let's, let's get it back. I'm a little bit too late. Updated. For, I've let's heard of DL Chronicles. That. Oh, you ain't up on a DL Chronicles? But I, don't, I didn't really watch it like that. I'm late. So I see that was but you. See, that's even more of a reason that they need to update it. She said, Boom. I see that was you. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nigga. Anyway. Also, um, Ribbon of Hope Celebration, which was uh, nominated for a Daytime Emmy in 2009. They do produce their own original content as well as acquiring content from other networks. So okay. it's, it's a little bit of a mix going on there, but they are primarily LGBTQ+. So... Um, Switching from that, in addition to Hair.TV, you also have A Connection TV. This is a smaller 
black owned subscription based platform oh mm. and back to here tv if you do want a subscription it's 7.99 monthly and 67.99 yearly so That's eight con- yep so eight connection tv smaller black owned based in atlanta more content geared towards pocs and this is the con this is the network that has uh the one with rico rico the fuck i forgot mr the name. cassidy um, yeah rico mr. cassidy mr., right isn't that the name of it, the Mister? No, um, sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I have to look on my phone. Damn, we just fucking reviewed. The- I could have sworn it's called the Mister. I think it's. Let me see. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and find out which what the name of that show is for you. But that is on A Connection TV and A Connection TV. I reached out to the person that owns it, W. Wesley Henderson. He is uh, linkable on. Instagram, you can follow him at A Connection TV. Um, and you can also follow him on Twitter, like I do, mm. ACTV. So I reached out to him if he had any more information because there's not a whole lot of information on their website. All right, so this Let one, It Go, Let It Go Too. That's the name. Uh, oh, that's the movie. That's the short film yeah. that Rico was in. Let yeah. It Go Too. So A Connection TV produced that, and gotcha. that's on their network. So he got Black and Gay, which is another series. Yeah, and yeah. And then The Mister, which is another series. Yeah, yeah. So they got a bunch of joint on there. They it's, have. It's, it's they, a lot of content. It's they definitely a lot of around. content on there. Um, but yeah, I tried to reach out to <laughs> Mr. W. Wesley Henderson, and um, I have not heard back from him. So at press time, no laughs. So no you know what I'm saying. But you could definitely holler at him on. You gets no love. <laughs> right, right. <See? laughs> you know what I'm saying he saw me looking at Mosiah too long. Oh, that's what it was. Uh, that's what it was. Damn. Yeah. Oh well, Sheesh. my bad. It is what it is. Listen, but man. you could definitely. I still follow you at ACTV on Twitter and hey. A Connection TV uh, on Inst- or, yeah Instagram. Uh, What's it, up, man? They out here doing big things. Seven ninety nine monthly subscription and seventy nine ninety nine yearly subscription. Creating platforms for the Q Plus community. For the Q Plus community, I, I thought that was pretty I love pretty it. dope as well. That's hard. Like that's that's and of course we can't forget. Slate TV. Slate TV also has original content, and you know we're also on there. You got the query on there. I mean, of course. Yeah, you know I'm saying we got a few videos on there. I oh, think they yeah. just put the cake video for the Alliance, the illustrious oh, they, group. Yeah, they did. They I did. think they just do that on there. So you got a whole lot of places where you can kind of see, you know, yeah, yeah. friends, friends, and and people just like you and us. Get in tune with it. You know, get in tune. You know. That's where we at, and that's what's going on okay. in these streets, the streets this time. Heavy, man. You know what I'm saying? It's heavy out is, in the streets. It's heavy. And you heavy, heavy in them. Boy. I see you. Boy. Okay. okay. I got to get my exercise. Hey, that's man. really what is really going on. Hey, you know man, what I'm listen. That's what it's about. I got to make sure and see. And then, you know, it just so happened that while I'm getting my exercise, I'm always in touch because I got my air to, to the, the streets. streets. Okay. Well, do you have it, man? Listen. Well, while you in the streets... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm in a crib with it. Okay. With with the homies. With the homies. You know what I'm saying? What's happening? You know what we do. We path, pass, puff, puff, pass. Path, path. Puff, puff. Path, 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 path. <laughs> puff, puff, pass, baby. Yeah, Listen, we're going to have a smoking session. <laughs> in, in the, the smoking, smoking section. section. That's what we about to do right now. You know what I'm saying? That's he, how we doing he it. He couldn't let me roll with that. Mm-mm. He would not. I heard of the puff, 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 puff pastries. What? <laughs> nah, but we out here with it. I'm gonna pass that off. That little roach. Get get the best roach. out of that. You know what I'm saying? Live your life. Uh, then he gonna give me the roach. I'm sorry because you know what I'm saying God. it was it was. You know it's been a long episode. We out here. That that blunt don't always make it. But you know I'm gonna roll up another one once we get up out of here. So we have an interesting query for you guys today. All right. What was the first weed movie? Ooh. Like, does anybody know? Like, that's a fucking like I I never really thought about the it. The first one I ever seen. What's the, the first, first one you seen? Ever. What's the first one you know? The first of? one like, I ever seen? seen was probably How High. Oh shit! Okay, okay. Red How and Meth. High, Red and Meth. I love that movie. That's that a was, great fucking movie. You know what I'm saying? I was able to escape through them. Oh, that's a great movie. Did you see that in the theaters? I saw it in the theater. Did I see that in the theaters? I saw it in the theater. I don't know if I saw that in the theaters. I saw I I think I saw that at the crib. I don't know if I saw that at the theater. And then they got the How High 2. Yeah. I'm I did trying not to think of what's that. the first weed movie? Mine's might be Half Baked. Half Baked. I've heard of Half Baked. Nah, fr- is Friday before Half Baked? Friday before Half Baked. 
right? I think so. Friday, my, Friday might be my first one. I want to say Friday. That's probably the first one I remember, like, of, like, being like, all right, this is a weed-based movie. Like, it's no doubt. I didn't even realize it that. Ain't it ain't subtle. Like, this nigga had a big-ass, Chris Tucker had a big-ass joint in every scene. That's like, true. this nigga was smoking. I just thought and it, his was name a, was, it was coincidence. His name was Smokey. I mean, Smokey Robinson. Nah, his name was Smokey because he smoked. <laughs> but so we're gonna get into the first recorded weed movie. All right. All right. So we got to go back, and I'm talking back to like the 30s, which I didn't realize we was gonna have to go back that far. But around that time, there was a big war, like war on drugs per se. Like drugs was like big no no. Motherfuckers was getting turned out. They wasn't having it. It was a lot of scandal going on in Hollywood at the time, and it was relating a lot of shit to drugs. It was just like, nah, we got to shut this shit down. We got to nip it in the bud. So they came up with this act, and it was called the Motion Picture Production Code, and it prohibited the depiction of uh, drug use in movies in any way, even if it was like a bad guy snorting up or something like that. It was like, right. nah, none of that shit. We cutting it all out. You ain't going to do it. So that birthed the era of like the exploitation films. So you pretty much had like the underground joints that'll show you all the other shit that they wouldn't show you in Hollywood. Um, so around that time, this was like, it was actually a movie called Reefer Madness. Mm -hmm. And all you know, Reefer is like a, you know, a term for weed. Yeah. And it was like a propaganda film, like an anti-weed propaganda film. So it was geared towards deterring youth and kids from using you know weed because it kind of depicted people from being sex crazed and aggressive yeah. sexually after using yeah, weed yeah, and shit yeah. like that but the rice got picked up by this guy named uh the son uh esper he got the rights to the movie and he was like in the whole exploitation circuit so he got the rice to it he tweaked it a little bit so he could fit you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. then get into that category that genre and he put it out, and it kind of went crazy, and there you have it, the first fucking weed movie. It just birthed on some by mistake type shit. But being that that motion picture production code was in place, and movies, you could license movies, like movies stayed in theaters longer back then. Like nowadays, a movie come out, and that should be out of the theaters in like a month. A month, yeah. yeah. Back then, that should be in there for like 10 years. Like you... Ooh. You not just leaving like if you got a good movie, your shit hold down. So Reef of Madness was the only weed movie for like a few decades, for like three decades. We ain't see the next weed movie until like what was it? I think fifty eight. Uh it's called uh, High School Confidential. Um that was the next, you know, recorded weed movie. And then you had other eras and then every year after that, I mean every decade it kinda, you know, you got more and more until you hit the seventies with the Cheech and Chungs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they kinda made it famous and then you come into the nineties and you got your Fridays and your half bakes and all that shit. So how highs and all of that. How highs, clerks, all of that all of that type shit. So they have a list and they kind of go chronologically of all of the movies that have come out. Not all of the movies, but a lot of the movies that's particularly, they have like criteria. So it can't just talk about weed, but it has to have a character that shows weed, them smoking weed, using it. One of the main characters have to, you know, it has to be like a focus of the yeah, movie. Yeah. So you can't just be like, all right, we talked about it. It's a weed movie. Um, but they start off with Reefer Madness in 1936. And then in 58, you got High School Confidential. In 69, you got Easy Rider definitely know about that movie a lot of people kind of base videos and shit off of that movie mm. um in 72 you got fritz the cat i never heard of that movie um 78 up in smoke which is a cheech and chong movie nine to five um i think that's with what's her name jane fonda and um, i think that's they joint and dolly Parton. i'm not sure but nine to five is mm. another one um fast times at fremont uh ridgemont high in 82 um, 93, Days and Confused. I never saw that one either, but I heard about that one. I heard about that one. Um, Clerks in 94, which is like the prequel to Silent, Jay and Silent Bob. That's like the, the first one that came out. Um, Friday. Friday. You got Biodome. Um, I, did I see that? I don't know if I saw that Biodome. Half Baked, which came out in 98. Bong Water, which came out in 98. Dude, where's my car? Which came out in two thousand. Did you ever see that movie? 
That's a crazy movie. I, I never saw know. the whole movie. I I've never pieces, seen the whole right? movie. Yeah, That's I've what it is. Like it's one of those. Of yeah, I always catch play. it. Like, and so TV. I never really even knew if it was a weed movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, according to this list, it is. Okay. Um, Saving Grace in two thousand. How High in two thousand one. Mm, Super Troopers in two thousand one. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle in two thousand four. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, one. Smiley Face, which I never saw. In 2007, Super High Me, which I heard about, but I never saw I've it. Always been told to go see Super High Me. Is that me. like a documentary, like Super Size it Me? Is a su- it is a, yeah, and it's on Netflix. Super Size Me was crazy, so I want to see Super High Me. Uh, that looked, that looked nuts. Oh, um, and then 2008, they got Pineapple Express, which is another joint. But they got like a few that came out recently, and you know, it's a bunch of like shot right shelf joints that came out that talk about trees. Um, would Paper Soldiers be a weed movie? I don't know if that would be a weed movie. They definitely talk about it in there, though. That's another good one that I love. But what about what? the um, High School Musical with Snoop and uh, Wiz Khalifa? Wasn't that a movie? Oh, don't talk about that movie. That movie was so bad. <laughs> but that counts, too. Dev, Dev and uh, Kevin or something go to yeah, high school yeah, or some shit school. like that. Man. I've never seen it. I uh, just know. I've, I've never seen the whole thing. Hey, I couldn't get through it. I really couldn't. And I love both of them. <laughs> But oh, nah, that oh wasn't, wow! Nah, it that, wasn't doing nah. it. Oh man, I had high hopes for yeah, that. I see, see what no, I did there? No, see no. <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> nah, that, that, it's not it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend that one. But you know, they make great. They make great high smoking music. You can smoke to their music, but you don't want to watch the the, yeah. the movie. It was. It was not great. Mm. What's your What's your favorite? We smoke a movie. I haven't seen very many, so oh, okay. I just know the first one that I saw was How High. I was about How High is se- a classic. That's I was about seventeen when I saw it. That's a great fucking and movie. And I think by that point I had been introduced to weed through my cousins, but I never smoked it. Mm, okay. And of course it's hip hop, Method Man, Red Man, biggest rappers of that era. So That's the thing about like when I saw Friday, I never I wasn't a smoker when I first saw it. So I just liked the movie just because of the, you know, the comedic value, the storytelling. But then as yeah. you get older, you smoke, you know what I'm saying? You like, oh, you understand it on a different level. Absolutely. absolutely. And it's like, oh shit. Okay. I think I would refill. But that. um my was, favorite is probably What was your first one? The first one I remember is Friday. Okay. That's the first one I could kind of recall that I was like, all right, this is a weed movie. But I saw like Cheech and Chong movies like on VHS as a kid, but I didn't really know like they were smokers. Like I've always we just had heard movies the references. In the crib. Yeah, like my mom just had mad movies, so we just happened to have a few Cheech and Chong joints. Mm. And I watched them. It was just like comedy. Like I didn't really know they was potheads, like I was too young to really put all that to together. Get all that together. But when I was of age and I could kind of realize, like, all right, they smoking weed, it was like Friday. But my favorite one is probably Half Baked. I love that fucking movie. <laughs> like Dave Chappelle was so goofy in that fucking movie. That was a good ass movie. Um, that one and Pineapple Express is pretty fucking good. Like that's a crazy ass movie. I always forget how crazy that movie is until I watch it again, and I'm like, yo, how did I forget about this movie? Like. That's a wild ass movie. Like you haven't seen that, right? I have not seen it. I haven't you, even that's, gotten that's, a that's chance a, to see it. That's a must see on the list. Like I you heard, should definitely check that shit out. You yeah, I heard it movie. was a must see. Like that's I was yeah. I wasn't into the hype of it even back then, but I've always heard good things. Sometimes you gotta get to the movie on your own time. Yeah, you know true, I mean? true, true. It is what it is. But it's it's a definitely a good movie to check out. But hey, what are some of your favorite movies? Do you know any ones that we didn't list? It's definitely a few I know that didn't make the list. Um, you gonna check that? Snoop I feel like and getting Khalifa? into a bag. Yeah. Hey, listen, go check it out. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think in the comments, cause I kind of, you know, you know how I feel about it. You but I want to go on a little binge, like do a bunch of like a weed movie binge. Just binge a bunch of movies about weed, smoke a bunch of weed, chill out. You know what I'm saying? Veg out, have a nice little, totally, it's a nice little day. You know what I'm saying? I would do that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hook that up, man. I'm, okay. I'm gonna get into that real Let's soon. Make but that happen. hey, what? Let us know what y'all think in. Did you know it was a first weed movie? I mean, of course you knew it was the first one, but did you know it was in the 30s? Like, that's kind of crazy. 30s. It didn't happen to be a mistake. She was an anti-weed propaganda movie. You know they loved their propaganda yeah. back in the day. Like, that was the shit. That was, Ugh. that's how they control you. Ugh, tell me it's about It's part it. of the indoctrination. Propaganda. Hey, but listen, man, we ain't gonna end on all that. Nah, Let's nah. End on the motherfucking high We're note. End it on... It's hot in the streets. It's hot, it's hot in, in here. From coast to coast, what is dope? This hope, what is dope? This hope, sheesh. 
Wife. Wife. Is it lit?